Imagine this. You are preparing to enter the business world and kickstart your career. You've got the skills, you've got the passion, and the drive to make your mark in the world. Possibilities are endless, right? Well, what if I tell you that there is an invisible force that is trying to mess up with your plans? It's called an unconscious bias, and today we are going to explore how it impacts our lives and what we can do to combat it. Now, by the show of hands, how many of you have heard about unconscious bias before? Okay, good. For those of you who are not familiar with this topic, we will try to shed some light on it today. In today's world, biases and stereotypes as well are still very much a thing. You can imagine them as these unfair judgments that people make about other people based on how they speak, um, how they're dressed, where they're coming from, and so on. So what is an unconscious bias? You can imagine unconscious bias as wearing a blinders that completely limit your view. They stop you from seeing the whole diverse world around you. When bias kicks in, what happens is that our brain is taking shortcuts and is jumping to conclusions based on factors such as gender, nationality, how someone is dressed, and so on. Now, if you ask yourself, why does my brain do this? Well, simply said, it's a survival instinct. Imagine that hundreds of years ago, you stumbled upon a lion or whatever other beast our ancestors were battling. Or imagine that you ended up in a completely different village that wasn't your own tribe, so most likely that wouldn't be a super comfortable situation for you. So what happened in those moments is basically that making fast decisions was essential for us to survive. Now, I want you to think about the last time you were in a new situation or in some unfamiliar place. Can you do that? Think about how you felt at that moment. Most likely, it was either fear or anxiety or some other type of discomfort. What happens is those, in those situations is that our brain is basically wired to assess our surrounding for safety, and this can also sometimes lead to making judgments about other people as well. However, today, we are not constantly fighting for survival, so this quick judgment feature of our brain isn't necessarily always helpful. Unconscious bias can impact many areas of our lives, starting from the friends we choose, places we hang out to, and even the way we communicate with each other. Now, let's dwell a bit deeper when this story actually begins. It begins very early in your life, when we are influenced with everything that is around us, be it your family, your friends, and even the media. Those influences are impacting directly the choices that we are making. What music we are going to listen to? Who are we going to vote for? How are we going to dress? Who are we going to hang out with? And so on. Think about your own upbringing for a moment. How many of the things that you grew up with were actually your conscious choice? Or even better question, how many times did you do something just because your friend did it? I believe that each one of us can th think of many examples of, of these situations in the past. What happens over the time as you grow up is basically our brain is starting to create the boxes or cate categories. So what happens is that for every new situation that you experience, your brain will try to put it somewhere in those existing boxes rather than trying to process everything from scratch. Obviously, this is very convenient for our brain because it saves its time. However, what this has as a consequence is the blinders that we mentioned in the beginning. So they're slowly starting to get on. What's a good thing about this is that once you realize you're wearing a blinders, you can very easily take them off. It all starts with self-awareness and acknowledging that we all have biases. It's not something to be ashamed of. It's simply a part of being human. But by recognizing that this happens, we can all start changing it. Now, you may wonder, why should I even care about all of this? Well, picture this. We have Maya. Maya is a brilliant young woman who also happens to be a great graphic designer. She recently applied for a graphic designer job 
for a US company that is hiring remotely. While she had all the qualifications for the job and managed to land the first interview, during that interview, hiring manager decided and learned about Maya that she's coming from Bosnia. He decided that her salary ask is way too high for the country that she's coming from. So she did not get the chance to go to the second interview. Of course, Maya doesn't know this, and she's left wondering, why didn't I get, the, get this second call? Or let's have another example. We have Samir. He is an aspiring male nurse. He's very compassionate, he's very driven, he's always aiming to provide top-notch care to his patients. But he is in a field that is traditionally dominated by women, so from time to time he can face some raised eyebrows and questions such, should you be an engineer or something like that? And if you think that we are way past this in 2023, you would be surprised. In June this year, a Harvard-led group of experts gathered and they decided to launch an initiative that is aimed at promoting greater fairness in AI-powered hiring platforms. What they found out was that 70% of companies use automated applicant tracking systems. However, many of those algorithms reproduce and sometimes even amplify biases and human errors. For all of you who don't know what applicant tracking system is, or ATS, that's essentially a software that companies are using to manage their hiring process. It helps you with things such as collecting the resumes, job applications, organizing candidates into different categories based on their skills, and even helping you to uh, communicate with them through the process. Now, AI ATS is basically like your private smart assistant who does some of those things for you. What happens with AI systems is that their algorithms are learning from the existing data. So if data is already biased before it starts learning from it, it can happen that this algorithm disproportionately screens and rejects candidates. Having in mind that all of us at certain points will find ourselves on the job market, what you can do is to make sure that your own resume is more inclusive. You can do this by avoiding to add any type of personal information in your resume, such as date of birth or marital status, or even your photo in the end and focus rather on highlighting the experience and achievements that are relevant for the job you are applying for. Now, as a recruiter who is working in a global company with people who are coming from more than 30 different countries, I'm obviously very passionate about this topic. One of the good practices that companies are doing today is training for their employees and their interviewers. So what happens in those trainings is that apart from learning what bias is and how it affects our hiring process and hiring decisions, it's very important to emphasize that each candidate should have the same experience in the process. What this means is that you as a company need to evaluate each candidate based on same criteria that is tightly connected to the job rather than some other things such as country you're coming from, your age, and so on. Apart from that, having a diverse team can also enhance creativity and innovation, among other positive impacts in the workplace. When you have a team that consists of members coming from different cultures, different backgrounds, and different experiences, each one of them will bring unique perspective to the table. And this can really come in handy, especially when you need to solve some, some kind of problem and having a bit wider range of ideas and solutions to different problems. For you personally, this can also mean that if you are part of this diverse team, this will definitely impact your growth. You will be forced to improve your communication skills, to develop maybe stronger conflict resolution skills. But in general, it will also challenge you to adapt, to learn from different situations, and to um, improve your resilience skills overall. Now, if you're looking for a job, and this topic is something that is important for you and you want to make sure that your company is tackling this, what you can do is to do very thorough research of your employer. Remember, interview is not just for the companies to check whether you are fit for the role and for the team. It's also an opportunity for you to check whether this company and this team is someone that you would like to work with in the future. Now, biases obviously are not that glaring all the time. Sometimes they can be very, very subtle. 
So in those situations, um, you are maybe not aware of them at the first sight. I will tell you an example of my friend who recently landed a job in an international company. What he noticed when he joined the company was very different style of communication comparing to what he was previously exposed to. He perceived his colleagues to be very direct and very open, which in his previous companies and the country he's coming from could be considered rude and sometimes even aggressive. Obviously, he approached the situation with open mind and with curiosity and over the time adapted to this new style of communication. But what, kept, what could have easily happened in this situation is for him to make a bunch of conclusions about those people and in general not to be able to work with them um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Luckily, awareness of those things is really growing year over year. Different companies, different organizations, different educational institutions are doing different things to tackle this issue. But what can you do, starting from now, to improve your own life? In general, knowledge is a pretty powerful tool against bias. The best way to expose yourself to different perspectives is to hang out with people that you usually wouldn't hang out with, or to speak with people that you usually don't agree with. So if I can give you one advice to start from already today, is to mix things up a bit in your life. You can start with small things, such as going to watch a movie that you usually wouldn't watch, or go to a new place that you usually don't go to. Surround yourself with people from different backgrounds, different cultures, different viewpoints. If you are currently studying, consider joining some NGOs or student clubs or any other places where you can get in touch with people who are not part of your immediate circle. If you are feeling adventurous, you can also consider to take an opportunity to go and study abroad for a semester. If you're looking for a job, you can apply for a company that is hiring remotely. You can also network with different people, either on LinkedIn or visiting different conferences or going to different forums online. To sum it up, unconscious bias is part of being human, but it doesn't have to define any of us. It's about recognizing that we all have our blind spots to understand where this is coming from and to be able to confront it heads on. Addressing unconscious bias is essential not just for us to create more fair workplace or the organizations we are part of, but to one step ahead to build a more fair world where everyone will have the same opportunity. I challenge each one of you to put into action what you have heard today. Challenge your own biases, embrace diversity, and strive for inclusivity. Imagine that we live in a world where our differences are not just tolerated or accepted, but it's rather something that we celebrate and where everyone can be their authentic self. I will leave you with this quote from an unknown author that says that diversity is the one true thing we all have in common. So celebrate it every day. Thank you. Thank you.